Welcome back to our virtual classroom, this time for chapter three. What can the study of primates tell us about human beings? So in this chapter, we, you guys have been studying a little bit about non-human primates and the different varieties that we can see in nature. Uh, the chapter also discusses a little bit about why it is so important to learn about them, um, especially because humans belong to the order of primates. So there are many imp important um, characteristics in the biology of non-human primates that may be related to us. So in this section, I want to talk a little bit about the taxonomies and the prosimians. Um, the reason I put the prosimians in this um, in this video is because the prosimians are the cause of the different taxonomies that we are going to see. So first, a little bit about the location of the primates. So we can find them in all major um, um, rainforests around the world. And of course, we're gonna have the, uh, some exception like the Japanese macaque that live in a temperate climate in, ja in Japan. And we are going to see of, uh, a lot of primates that are used in research so that we're going to have a lot of primates living in laboratories, research facilities, and in the wild. Uh, we are going to see that we have a great diversity in when we're talking about primates. Uh, we can, you, uh, we, uh, I think that there's more than 500 varieties and that without counting the species. So here we see a family tree based on what we call the a traditional taxonomy. When we say that a traditional taxonomy, this is the type of taxonomy that is more focused on the morphology uh, of, the or, of the species to make classifications. So here we're gonna have two groups. So you see the prosimians here, and it will include the lemurs and the lorises and the tarsiers. The other big group will be the anthropoids. So the anthropoids will include the monkeys, the gibbons that we are going to call them lesser apes, and the great apes, the orangutans, the gorillas, the chimpanzees, and the hominids. So all the apes and the humans are contained in another group called hominoids. So we are going to see a little bit of this division. But first I want to show you another uh, taxonomy that is, uh, well, that is more modern. And we call this uh, contemporary taxonomies. And um, contemporary taxonomies are focused in the evolutionary relations that biologists think were responsible for similarities and differences between the species. So one focus on the morphology, the other one focus on the evolutionary relations of similarities and differences. So in this tree, you see that the order of primate, you remember primate is an order within the class mammalia. We are going to divide the primates in two suborders, the extrasorines and the haplorines. So you see here we have the lemurs and the lorises by themselves and the tarsiers that was grouped in the previous taxonomy is now grouped with the anthropoids in the suborder haplorine. So what is the difference between strasorines and haplorines? So the first, let's see first the strasorines. So as we saw, it includes only the lemurs and the lorises. And here we are going to see these prosimians. Um, they have an attached lip to the gums by a web of skin. They also have a wet nose. And because uh, this um, web of skin attached to the gums, prosimians don't, uh, don't have facial expressions. We are going to call this attachment a rhinarium. Prosimians also possess uh, a tooth comb that consists in the forward tilting of the lower incisor and the canines, and it is used for grooming. They also possess a grooming claw on the second digit of their feet and an ankle bone that flares on the side. So let's see um, 
a little bit about this. So here we have the lower jaw of a lemur. If you see here, we have the, the lower teeth and we see that the canines and the incisors are tilt forward. So that is the tooth comb. In the, in the hand, uh, we see the toilet claw, the one that is used for, for grooming. Um, so these are specific to this kind of primates. You later, you are going to see the difference between the hands of a prosimian with the hands of an anthropoid. So the second group is the haplorhines. This one includes the tarsiers and the anthropoids. Here we have, uh, we have the primates whose upper lip is not attached to their gums because the lip is not attached to their gums. Haplorhines have facial expressions. And we're gonna have three infraorders. The tarsi forms that include the tarsiers, the platyrines that include the newworm anthropoids, and the catarines that include the old world anthropoids. So this, so practically the difference is between that attachment to the lip. So if the upper lip is not attached, we are talking about a haplorine. If the upper lip is attached, we are talking about a, a so let's return to the traditional primate taxonomy. The reason is good to know about the two is because you're going to see that different books are going to use either one. For example, in the book that we are using right now, they make emphasis on that division between strasorines and haplorines. But in the book that I use in, in another class that I teach in another college, they're using the traditional taxonomy. So in the traditional taxonomy, they put under the prosimian the tarsiers. So the tarsier is the one who they are being moving around because practically they have a lot of characteristic of prosimians, but also they have characteristic of anthropoids. So before uh, moving on, I want you guys to see a little bit about uh, prosimian. So you know that in mammals, the most important um, scent is the sense of smell. So for example, a dog, it depends a lot in the sense of smell. In primates, especially um, more complex primates, the most important sense is the sense of sight. But in the case of the prosimians, they, they still have a lot of dependence on the sense of smell. So prosimians depend much more on a smell than other primates. They have mobile ears, they have whiskers, they have a longer snout, they have feel, fixed facial expressions that we said uh, regarding the rhinarium, grasping hands, stereoscopic visions, and a large visual center in the brain. So if you see the prosimians, um, you look uh, at some of them, they may look like a squirrel or a little mammal. But you see here that they have certain characteristics that many mammals have. They also have the most important primate characteristic of grasping hand, stereoscopic vision, and an enlarged visual center in the brain. So what happened with the tarsier? Let's see the tarsiers. So the tarsier is, an, they are nocturnal and arboreal. They are found mostly in the Philippines and Indonesia. They eat insects and other small animals, so the diet is very different to the other prosimians. They possess night vision, enormous eyes, and an extraordinary eyesight and visual centers in the brain. Those two eyes that you see so big are heavier than uh, its brain. They are called tarsiers because they have a special adaptation in the tarsal bones um, that is, um, that or the ankle bone that is very elongated. But this guy uh, have a, a reduction on the sense of smell. So if you see they're very different to the prosimians. They, they may look like them, but they have, um, they, they don't depend that much in the sense of smell. And also the uh, haplorine, they don't have that attachment to the lip. So with that, we 
finish uh, this section, we are going to return later to talk about anthropoids.